Hi there. Welcome to the Manifesting You YouTube channel. The purpose of this channel is to assist you in becoming and being your authentic and true self. The tool that I will be using to assist you in this process is the Law of Attraction. Not only the Law of Attraction, but also the Law of Attraction uh, tarot readings on a monthly basis for each sign of the zodiac. I wanted to give a brief introduction um, before I do the actual readings for the month of April. So I'm sure you've heard of the Law of Attraction. Um, it's kind of a buzzword these days. There's definitely something to the Law of Attraction. The Law of Attraction is nothing new. Uh, this actually goes back even to biblical times. Uh, there's a proverb that says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you don't know what the Law of Attraction is, basically the concept is, is that whatever a man or woman, you know, a human being, whatever they focus on, whatever they concentrate their energies on or towards, their thoughts are, is automatically by nature of the universe and the laws of the universe is going to be reflected back to that person, is going to be naturally attracted back to that person. And it's going to mirror them in their own life. So my goal with this knowledge of the Law of Attraction is to actually utilize and to help others utilize this magnetic power that we each possess as spiritual and creative beings made by the divine and the power of each sign as well. Um, so we're all technically living magnets. We're all magnets. And my goal, my desire is to utilize that natural gift that we already have. Um, the first step is actually just being aware of it. Until you're aware of it, uh, we're just pretty much going through life and, and it can, you can kind of feel like a victim. Whatever happens by chance, um, but I truly believe and have experienced myself, there's so much more to it. And so I want to help you awaken to your own inner power, your own inner strength, and, and help create who you truly are, who you're truly meant to be. So the Law of Attraction is a, is a very powerful force, okay? Um, but like I said, in order to utilize it, it has to be recognized and accepted as a reality to begin to start harnessing its power. So um, before I do the readings in two weeks for the month of April, um, I really am just hoping if you're watching this channel and if, if this is something that appeals to you, the first step is really just observation, uh, a state of observation in your own life, just being aware, uh, listening to the words, uh, the things that you're thinking on a daily basis. You can even look at other people's lives. Um, notice, pay attention, pay attention to the current vi vibrations that you have in your own life or even the current thoughts and vibrations of others and what they're manifesting in their life based on those thoughts. So look at your life and I believe it's, it's a mirror. So the people that are in your life currently, your job, your health, um, your happiness, your love life, just everything that's in your life, every, the things that are in your life right now, what is being mirrored back to you? Uh, and, and the key here is to do this without judgment. Um, I know that, you know, if you're filled with a lot of guilt or fear or shame, it can be like, oh, I don't even want to think about that. Just observe. Just be like a news reporter and just observe. Just make notes, jot down the things that you notice. So over time, this is going to help build faith and trust in the process that, wow, thoughts really do have power, and wow, you're going to start making connections, and you're going to start seeing the reality of the, the law of attraction. It's already at work. It's currently already working. Um, so observation is key here. So once belief and some understanding is established, we can slowly or quickly start using the laws of the law of attraction. Instead of being a victim or just kind of letting things happen to us, we can be an active participant, and that is really my goal for myself and to assist others. 
and we can start to experience the euphoric joy of being part of this divinely creative universe. So obviously with all this, I mean, it sounds so exciting and blissful, <laughs> but you know, really practically speaking, there's a word of caution. And that word of caution is that, as you know, probably, our world is not a perfect place yet. Um, humans, as humans, we still have flaws. Um, I believe there's sin, there's limitations, there's weakness. Uh, there's things that have been uh, generationally passed down. We have shortcomings. So with this knowledge, when you, when you start, when you embark on this process, have patience. Um, know that it takes practice, that persistence and utmost love and acceptance of yourself is necessary. Um, so I just, I, it just makes me think of Paul the Apostle. He wrote that, um, in a scripture, he wrote that not that he's already made perfect or he has not attained perfection, but he presses on. He presses on toward that goal to win that prize. And, you know, Paul the Apostle was a very divinely inspired man. And if someone, you know, he still pressed on. He knew that he wasn't perfect. He knew, but he, you know, he fought that fight. He fought the good fight. So I just want to say that because it's a process. And clearing out the old to replace, you know, clearing out old and replacing it with the new to attract our highest self and good is a process. Um, you know, I liken it to a farmer. A farmer is patient. He nurtures, he awaits the growth of his crops. He has faith in the process. So we should all the more, because we're human beings, we have precious spirits and souls, um, we should lovingly and, nurturing, and nurture ourselves and accept our process and our journey. So at times in the process of the law of attraction, and this is just from my own experience, you're gonna feel like you're on the mountaintop. Like you can see everything clearly, um, it's crisp, you're invigorated, you got it, you figure this stuff out. And everything just seems so clear and obvious, and those are wonderful times. <laughs> but there's also times that, whether it's periods of resistance or just the natural changes in the universe or whatever's happening, we may feel muddied, confused, uh, lost almost at sea, just overwhelmed. And you just have to know that when you're in that process, that all is well. So, like I said, my goal here with this channel is to manifest your highest self. And I'm here to assist you in that process and to bring clarity. And I thank you so much for joining me on that. And I'm just going to, as an introduction, simplify the law of attraction down to three simple steps. And in the next few weeks, um, before I start those readings, I would like you to just think about these steps in your own life and what this would look like for you. So the three steps of the law of attraction in your own life to start kind of um, making use of them and creating the life that you want and truly desire. The first step is the identification of desire. So what do you want? and? What is your soul's highest yearning? I mean, I know that's a really deep and philosophical question. <laughs> um, and you know, if you're not a yogi spending time in meditation all day, it's like, I don't know what I want. Okay, and I get that. So, or you might be a very decisive person and you know exactly what you want. Okay, so either way is fine. It's just, this is something to start putting in your conscious mind so that you can start thinking about this. So, if you're having trouble, a one way to go about this is to think about the things you don't want in your life. So for example, I don't, if one of my fears is I don't want to be alone, okay? All right, that's all I know, I just, I don't want to be alone. Well, think about the polar opposite of that. I have love and joy and tons of friends in my life. Okay, there you go, that is something that you truly want. So if it's easier for you to think about the negative than the positive, Think about the things that you don't want, because we, a lot of us, you know, negative thoughts are kind of easy to come by sometimes. So those are things that you're most afraid of. And then just do the polar opposite of what that negative thought is. That's going to give you an idea of what your soul truly desires. 
maybe you're like me where you just need to spend time alone. You just need to quiet yourself, get out of the hustle and bustle, allow yourself some time because you deserve it <laughs> um, to just listen, listen to your inner voice. Maybe it's been a while since you've done that and you just need to clarify in yourself and listen and maybe that's taking a walk. Maybe that's, you know, taking a drive. Maybe that is taking a bath. Maybe that's journaling. So number one is just, even if it's just a day, and this doesn't even have to be every area of your life. It can just be one thing, just to start out, just to practice. Um, you know, just to listen to who you are and what you're desiring at this time. So number one prop step is identifying your desire. So once you know your desire, once you've gotten clear on that desire, the second step, and, and obviously these aren't things you're all gonna do right now unless you want to, um, I'm just clarifying to you the overall picture of what the law of attraction is. The second step, once you have that desire, is it's now um, you're going to put the time, the energy, and the concentration to focus on that desire. This is where it's gonna take focus and persistence. Day by day, you're going to create a plan to nurture, give attention to, like tending a garden. So if you literally went out and cultivated the soil and, and planted a few brand new seeds, it's time to nurture those on a daily basis. You can't just expect it to grow. You stick it in the ground and then expect, you know, nature to do the rest. You know that you play a part in that. Uh, so this is where you're going to nurture those thoughts and just persist and focus. And for some people, you know, if they're really in tune, they can manifest very quickly. And for others, there might be things that you don't see where things in the universe have to come together in order for your intention to manifest. You really can't judge the amount of time. That's not for you to really figure out. You just have to do the work of focusing on and showing intention onto your desire. Okay, um, so step three. So once you've done that, now you, you've identified what you want, so you have clarity. You have put the time, the energy, you persevered, you have nurtured that idea that you, that you want, you focused on it. The third step is going to be allow, allowing. I mean, there's topics that could be done on each one of this, these, these subjects here. Um, this, I believe is, is maybe more difficult than the other two, maybe at least just for me. The allowing, this is where, and the reason for that is because when you, you've already found out what you truly want, you put a ton of energy into it, and that, that takes a lot of human will or desire. So once you have that intensity, which is beautiful, now you have to balance that out with allowing. And that's almost like counter what you were just doing. It's counterintuitive. But once you've done all that and you've put forth all that energy, now it's time to trust the process of the universe, okay? And I can just speak from my own experience. This is where I've had trouble. <laughs> you know, some people are kind of go with the flow and they just like let it flow, but they might be a little more indecisive about what they want. And then you have other people who know what they want, but they have a hard time allowing so that's kind of where, you know, I fell into. And so it's all about learning to balance our energies. So, and, and the reason that allowing is necessary is, is a basic premise here. And that is that we are not in charge. And we are human beings, which we definitely have power. We are powerful creators. But there is a natural law. There's natural laws of the universe that we cannot control. And I know that's like obvious, but sometimes consciously we don't act that way. So basically, our last step here is going to know our own place in the universe, knowing that it's not our job to make everything manifest. We've done our work, we've planted our seeds, and now we can trust the natural power of the universe to create it. Like we don't make the plant grow. We, you know, we do the work, we put forth the steps, but we have faith because we know that there is an energy, which I believe is God, that is going to bring it to life. And um, 
that is, it's, it's almost like a humility and a wisdom when we can surrender to this. Okay, so we surrender to this, to this utmost wisdom and supremacy, and we know that the things that we've desired will manifest perfectly for us. Okay, so let me give you an example of this. Say I am attracting love into my life. I'm attracting an awesome man that I love. Okay, and I do all the work and I have all my intentions. And then the third step, I have a very narrow view of what this looks like. And I, I've done the work, but this person is going to look a certain way. They're going to be a certain height. They're going to be a certain age. Um, you know, in my own mind, I'm like, this is what I want. And that's honestly, that's limiting the universe. That's limiting the creative potential. So that might be some area of resistance and it might keep what I truly desire unable to flow to me because I've blocked it. I've blocked the perfect thing, which isn't really what I thought it would be. I blocked it because I won't allow it. Okay, does that make sense? So I'm just trying to give you a, a practical example of what allowing looks like. So if I said I am going to attract someone that I love and a man that I love and you know, but I don't really put limitations on what that's gonna look like, it's gonna come to me so much faster because there is an infinite, creative, all-knowing, omnipotent, something bigger than us that knows a little bit more than we do. <laughs> and I know that sometimes that's hard to swallow, but the quicker that you can grasp that, oh, it's gonna save you so much trouble and I wanna save you trouble. Um, so when we allow, we allow it to manifest perfectly and trust that it's gonna manifest perfectly. There's infinite possibilities there and it's exciting. It's like, okay, what's, it's almost anticipation. You don't have to figure it all out. I mean, it's kind of refreshing in a way. I mean, there's a certain, there's a certain power in feeling like you're in control, but it's exhausting. It's exhausting to have to control everything. Um, so when we can let go of that and just let another power that is greater than us do that work, that magical creation, we are gonna be a lot happier people. So as human beings here, our duty is to first know ourself. I mean, you can't really, you can't really do anything if you don't know yourself. Otherwise, you're just kind of blowing with the whims of people's opinions and society and, you know, who are you? What is that divine inspiration in you? Okay, so the next couple weeks, take a day or two and just get to know yourself, get to know you and your inner voice and, and listen. And I know there's, you know, sometimes that's scary because it's like, I don't wanna, you know, we, there's kind of a fear of being with the self. And, and just, if that happens, just jot that down. Don't judge it, just be aware. Be aware that there's a lot of anxiety there. Um, that's part of this process, okay? So there's really no right or wrong. I just want to help you start focusing on you and listening to your inner self. Okay, and so once we kind of get to know ourselves, then we then the creative process begins. Then we can, you know, clarify our desires. We can start seeking them steadily. And we can watch and wait with flexibility, belief, being adaptive, and allowing. And that is true happiness in my in my opinion. That is a fulfilling life, and that is your—that is what you're meant to do. That is what who you're meant to be. That is a way for God to manifest His highest self in your highest happiness and greatest self, and to show that to the world. So I hope all this makes sense. Um, and and the other thing I wanted to mention real quick is. The readings that I'm going to start to be um, doing April 1st for all the different zodiac signs um, is called the Law of Attraction Tarot, and I'm super excited about this because it is these are readings that are specifically designed to assist you in manifesting your true desires um, in your life. I mean, it is made. It are these are tarot readings that are going to um, bring clarity to you by sign. And they're going to be general readings, obviously, but they definitely are going to apply and they're going to be an amazing starting point. They're going to give you pictures 
ideas, images of things that are possibly blocking you or um, things that will help expedite the process, it's going to bring awareness. And the goal of these readings is to bring you from your current state, so for that month, um, you know, what you're feeling at that time, what you're going through, what you're experiencing. The goal is to get you to your desired state month by month. And this is this process and this journey that we're going to embark on. So, super excited, super excited um, about turning your highest and best desires and self into reality and manifesting the true and authentic person that you are created to be. And I thank you so much for watching this video and bearing with me. Um, if you feel inspired and this is something that you are, you know, feeling excited about, I would love it if you subscribed so that you can get those readings to you and start kind of working on your own journey. I totally appreciate the likes and uh, your communication. And um, I'm just excited about this, this journey. So thank you so much and I will see you soon.